Precalculus, Unit P, Section 9. In this section, we're going to be reviewing how to solve linear inequalities and absolute value inequalities. While we do that, we're going to be using set notation that you learned earlier in Unit P, graphing on a number line, um, which you probably learned in Algebra 1. We are also going to talk about interval notation, which will be new for some of you. And we will be finding intersections and unions of intervals. Solving an inequality is the process of finding the set of numbers or the range that make the inequality a true statement. These numbers are called the solutions of the inequality, and we say that they satisfy the inequality, just like we do with an equation. The set of all solutions is called the solution set of the inequality. We could also call it a range. So let's start with a linear inequality. Let's solve, and then we're going to graph on a number line um, this inequality. We're also going to write our solution in set notation and interval notation. So we need to isolate the variable x, so let's start by subtracting 2 from both sides. Now let's divide by negative 3. When we do that, we need to switch our inequality sign. So our solution is x is greater than or equal to negative 1. So written as in set notation, we start with set braces and we say x such that, that's our straight line, x is greater than or equal to negative 1. Now for interval notation, I'll talk through this and then we'll talk about it more later on in the notes. So the largest value that x can be is positive infinity. The smallest value is negative 1. So with interval notation, we write the smallest value on the left side and the largest on the right side. So see how we have negative 1 on the left, comma, positive infinity on the right. Now the grouping symbols, they mean something. So if our values can be included, then we use a square bracket. So I set that next to negative 1 because our solution could be equal to negative 1. And then notice I have a curved parentheses next to my positive infinity. Curved parentheses means that our solution cannot equal that value. We can never equal infinity, it just keeps going. So that's why we put that grouping notation to the right of our infinity. And now finally on the number line, we're going to use those interval notation symbols on our number line. So instead of writing a closed circle at negative 1, we're going to write a squared off bracket. And then that shows that our solution can equal negative 1. Now we're going to draw an arrow or sh shade off to the right to show positive infinity and then put an arrowhead at the end of our shading, showing that our solution will continue on infinitely in our positive direction. Let's solve a compound inequality. We can tell it's a compound because we have two um, inequality signs. We're going to focus on the middle, which is where our variable is, and undo what's being done to that variable. So let's subtract 3 from both sides. So negative 2 is less than or equal to 2x and less than 8. And now let's divide by 2 on all sides. So negative 1 is less than or equal to x, and that is less than 4. So I'm going to write this as a solution set. So I'm going to open my set brace and say x such that. I got confused. I did interval notation. Such that. And then I write this as a compound inequality. So x is less than 4 and at the same time greater than or equal to negative 1. Now notice my smallest amount that my solution set can be is negative 1. So it will go on the left side of my interval notation. And 4 is the greatest value and it will go on the right. I'm going to put a squared off bracket by negative 1 because our solution can equal negative 1. And I'm going to put a rounded parentheses just to the right of the 4, because our solution can go all the way up to 4, but not equal it. And now on my number line, I'm going to write both of those, the bracket and the parentheses, the bracket at negative 1 and the parentheses at 4. And then I'm going to shade in between to show that my solution set can be all the values in between negative 1 and including, and up to 4, but not including. Interval notation. Now, here are your notes formally, okay? 
Parentheses indicate endpoints that are not included in an interval. Square brackets indicate endpoints that are included in the interval. They can be equal to. Remember, parentheses are always used with a positive or negative infinity because we can't include infinity. It's always out of our grasp. This comes from your textbook. It's from page 120. I just want to draw your attention. This is something that you will not have to be tested over, but just to give you some more language when you're talking about notations or intervals. So an open interval represents the set of numbers that are in between, but not including those two numbers. So notice that you have parentheses. That means it would not include the values a and b. And see how they're graphed on the number line. A closed interval, see how you have square brackets, represents the set of the numbers between a and b, but they and they also include a and b. And you can see how it's graphed. An infinite interval will have either positive or negative infinity as part of it. This is something else that's from your book. So it's a nice table. Just take a moment to look at interval notation compared to set builder notation or set notation and then compared to what it looks like on a number line. So if we look at that first row, so the interval A and B not including Notice that as a set, it says x are all the values in between a and b, so that notice there's no equal to sign. And then we gra when we graph, we do the curved parentheses at a and b, and we shade in between. All right, let's do a few more solving of linear inequalities. Then we're going to write our answers in set notation, in interval notation, and graph on a number line. So we need to get x out of the parentheses. So we're going to distribute first of all. I can combine my x's and my numbers on the right side of my inequality sign. So I get 7x plus 8. And then I'm going to subtract my 7x over and get 1x, subtract my 3, is greater than 5. So that's my solution to this inequality. So in set notation, I write my brace x such that x is greater than 5. I notice that this is um, an infinite interval. And so my solution set starts at 5 and it continues um, infinitely in the positive direction. So it does not include 5. So I'm going to start on the left with the curved parentheses, put 5 next to it, and then a comma, and then positive infinity, and then a curved parentheses. And so that's my solution set in interval notation. When I graph that, I will have a curved parentheses at 5, and then just shade to the right and put an arrow on my shading to show that my solution set continues infinitely in the positive direction. Now, number four, we need to first start by adding five to all sides. So we can get two is less than or equal to two thirds x, which is less than negative one. Uh, sorry, four. <laughs> so now I need to deal with this two thirds. So I'm gonna start by just multiplying by the denominator three. So six is less than or equal to two x, which is less than 12. And now I'm going to divide all sides by 2. So I get that my solution are all the values of x that are less than 6 and at the same time greater than or equal to 3. So as a set, I'll um, start by opening my set braces and say x such that and then write that as a compound inequality. Now I see that my lowest value in this interval is 3, so that'll go on the left, and 6 is my greatest. It can be equal to 3, so I have a square bracket next to the 3 to the left. Cannot equal 6, so I have a parentheses to the right of that. And then I'll use that bracket and parentheses at 3 and 6.
let's look at these next examples. So what we're going to do is we're going to write each of these in interval notation, set notation, and graph on a number line. So number five, hopefully you're recognizing that as interval notation. So it's the interval that can include one and three and a half and be all the numbers in between. So we'll say set uh, our set notation x such that x is less than or equal to three and a half, greater than or equal to one. So notice I do the equal to mark on both of my inequalities because of my square brackets. Now on my number line, I'm going to put those square brackets at one and at three and a half, and I'm going to shade in between. Now number six, hopefully you recognize that as set notation. So let's write that in interval notation. It's all the values of x that are less than negative 1. So negative 1 is our greatest value. It's going to go on the right of our interval notation. And then we're going to get, have everything less than. So negative infinity will be on our left. We're ne we don't include either of those values, negative infinity or negative 1. So we have parentheses next to both. And then on our number line, we'll simply have a parentheses um, to negative 1, and notice that I have it pointing kind of curved so that it's going to the left. And I shade to the left and put an arrow on that shading. All right, this concludes part one of the um, P9 notes.